Welcome back everybody, Boyd here with you again. We're here with another update on our Polar Lights 1350 scale refit build. We're moving right along here, you guys. You're probably getting tired of looking at the saucer by now, but we're getting dangerously close to finishing these up and finishing this part and getting this closed up, you guys. So I'm really, really happy about that. Um, just gonna catch you up here on what I've been working on the last couple of days. We left off in the last video where we were making some connections here on our board. We're using this tenant controls board. So what I've done is I've finished doing all my wiring for that. I've got everything connected in here. And then I've made a uh, extending wire harness here that's gonna extend down through the neck and down in, you know, out through the front of the model. All the wiring that we do in our secondary hull and the cells and all that will terminate out the front. And we'll connect it all up in there. We got a couple strobe lights we gotta do and uh, the internal lighting, of course, the shuttle bay, a couple other things. But um, so the board is entirely set up now. I've gone through and tested all these outputs. Um, basically, we're just making an extending wire off of that long enough to go out through the front of the model. That's just it with one wire. As I mentioned in the last video, uh, this board uses the, uh, the majority of all these uh, outputs here, the board's controlling the uh, positive side. So we're connecting everything up to the negative. Uh, as far as when we hook up our individual LEDs to all these outputs, the negative side of that LED will just go to negative power. The um, plus side will go to the uh, the actual wire from the control board. So I've got these all labeled. You can see I've got um, right side torpedo, phaser. Now these, there's three wires here that are uh, what we call momentary switch triggers. And that's uh, the deflector switch, the phaser switch, and we should have one more here for the uh, uh, for the photon torpedo switch. So that's just a negative wire, and that will connect to negative on a momentary switch. So when we hit the momentary, it temporarily grounds, and it tells the board to activate this particular effect. So if we hit this one, it will fire the photon. If we hit uh, the deflector, it will change from amber to blue and also activate the chiller grills when it goes to warp mode. And then we've got the uh, phaser, which will activate the phaser. So all these wires have been extended. Now, I want to remind everybody to pay really close attention to your instructions, as I said before, because I made a little mistake here. I got everything done, but when I got to the chiller grill output here, I couldn't get it to work. And I kept going back and double checking my wire to make sure I had the, the right output wire. When it finally dawned on me and I looked at this and that realized that this one output alone all the other ones operate the exact opposite, but this one output alone for the chiller grill, it uses the negative side as the control wire. Okay, so it's just the opposite of all these other ones that we did. So we had to um, uh, connect to the negative side uh, on our control uh, board, and then the red wire, the, the hot side of that, goes directly to our plus side on our power. So that was where I made the mistake. Once I corrected that, everything worked just fine. So as I said, pay attention to these outputs and everything, the polarity of each one. Ralph may uh, mix and match some of these outputs on this board. I'm sure he has some reason for doing that, but um, so we got that figured out and everything is straightened out there. So we've got the wire extension made here. This can go down through the neck, as I said, and out through the front. And then um, we've got a couple little more connections to make in here. Now I'm using the phaser effect on this board and I decided that um, I'm going to have the one phaser emitter on the bottom saucer in the front be the one that actually fires, okay? I'm not sure on the Enterprise refit if it could, you know, I think we only saw ever, ever saw one phaser bank at a time firing. I don't think we could fire multiple phaser banks at the same time like we could on the uh, Enterprise D and things like that. So I'm just going to have the one lower um, phaser effect at the front on the bottom of the saucer. So as we put this together and we drop the... Uh, bottom part of the saucer on here I have to make sure and connect this wire up just before we close it. Now we're going to move over to the bottom part of the saucer in just a second here and um, after we do a little bit more work here and then we'll show you how this is going to work. Um, I've also made this little uh, lighting uh, addition here. Now you guys have seen me do this before on the uh, TOS 350 scale Enterprise where I'm lighting the BC deck and the lower part of the saucer with the same method. So we had to get some light to the bottom. You notice we've got lighting all the way around the perimeter here for our outer window groups. Well, we don't have much lighting here for the BC deck, for these little windows right here, and the, the middle part of the windows that are in the bottom of the saucer. So I made up this uh, little light emitter system here, which is just a piece of cardboard. I uh, glued these two strips down of uh, 
our regular white LED tape, the double density stuff. And this is gonna glue in right here, you guys, just like this. And we'll do this before we close this up. We extend these wires over here to our main power loop that we made originally so that it always comes on whenever it receives power along with all these other uh, LED strips that we have here. Okay, so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and glue this in real quick just with some CA glue here. You can see I've got the one on the bottom that's gonna light up our little BC deck area here. Don't need a whole lot of light in there. Okay, and I made sure that all these are kind of aimed and lined up the way they are supposed to be. Let me get my uh, CA glue here ready to go. We're just gonna put a little glue in each, each corner here to start with just to get it kind of locked down. We'll spray a little bit of our kicker on that. Okay. And this works really good. This is a really good method that I've used several times. And that cardboard will, by the time that cardboard goes bad, it'll be 300 years from now. So you could use um, sheet styrene plastic if you want to do that too. And that'll work just the same or whatever you want to put in there, just something flat. Just make sure it's not conductive or whatever so it can't short out anything or do anything like that. So we're good there. I'm just gonna put a little bit more, just kind of back it up a little bit. A little bit more glue. Make sure she never moves on us. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna take these two wires. We've got a plus and a minus. We're gonna come over here and find our power. And uh, gonna look for the nearest location looks like we can come right over to here get our phaser wire out of the way for now you notice I've got these two little wires here these are connected to the um, the power loop as well um, so we've got some lighting that we put into the uh, the lower saucer that you'll see in just a second and this is just gonna jump power from the uh, top of the saucer to the bottom of the saucer if that makes sense you guys I'll explain that a little bit more in just a second but, uh, okay, so we've got, right here we've got uh, two little spots where we can grab power, so I'm just gonna go for that right here. Got these nice big uh, solder connections that are still out in the open. I kinda, I had to do some heat shrink where I connected these all together, so I'll just kinda extend that out a little bit and come over this way, I guess. Clip these off. Okay. And now we're going to strip them and solder them up. Grab my little tweezers here so we can wrap these wires around this, our connector here. one soldered and the same thing with our hot wire here sure we let these cool off just a second here and we'll give them a good tug make sure that they're yep, that one didn't grab that's why you always want to check that you guys must have missed it with my solder there Got a little piece of solder that fell off we want to get that out of there Let's try 
this once more, you guys. Okay, give that a second to cool off here. All right, we're good to go now. Just double check everything, make sure we don't have anything touching anything. We don't want to short anything out there. Okay, we're good there. Just kind of attack our um, we're gonna get our wires tacked down here glued down it's gonna kind of get bunched up real nice there and then in just a second we're gonna plug in our power here and, and check this to make sure our lights all come on I've done you guys is I've um, I've made a hole in the uh, in the lower part of the saucer here you know inside where the neck area is going to go so once the neck drops on there, on there these wires are going to go straight up straight through that hole through the neck and then out the front of the model where the because we're not going to put the deflector dish on right away we can do all of our wiring at the very front there just like you see me do on the TOS Enterprise it works out really good that way Okay, moving right along here, you guys. I double checked my wiring and everything here, and all of our lighting is working good. We're all set to go here. Um, time to bring in the lower part of the saucer, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be connecting up our. Um, you can see what I've done here, you guys. I've made this exact same loop that we did with the uh, very beginning of our upper saucer area there. So I have um, our thruster lights here. Now, what I did is I decided to double these up, you guys. I thought that the. Um, these five millimeter yellow LEDs that I put in for the thruster lights were gonna be uh, strong enough to light both the top and the bottom, but it, it was just a little bit dimmer on the bottom than I wanted it to be, so I just went ahead and put another one. So we'll have them kind of double stacked and there's enough room for those to fit. So those are all wired in. And again, they just come on all the time. Some of the more advanced control boards have an actual control effect over the thrusters. They make them kind of pulsate or operate randomly, but I just got these on all the time. And then we've got our wire connections here. Now we've got our green, our red, and our white uh, 0805 SMDs that we put in for our navigation lights. There are no strobe lights on the bottom of this. So um, what we've got to do is we've got to tie all the negative sides together here, okay? Because that's gonna go to our um, navigation circuit coming off of the board here. And um, that'll be a wire that I'll extend off of here. I believe it's right in this little area right up here. Uh, I think it's this one right here. So we can solder onto that and uh, we'll make a little jumper wire for that. But uh, what I wanted to show you guys before we, we kind of get into that, we got a couple little things to do. So let's move the, uh, the top saucer out of the way. And um, a lot of you guys have been asking, I came up with this little idea for, uh, you know, we sanded off the phaser bank detail, you guys. So. You can see here we've gone ahead and done that. Now what I did before I um, removed the last one, I'll show you here that I made a, just took a piece of tape and laid it on here and I marked, made two little marks where the um, phaser banks were actually spaced apart and then just butted it right up against that so I know that I can um, replicate that. So I'm just using my little pin vise here, you guys, and I'm drilling these back in place. And you can see you know, I've already drilled these and these and these. I'm just working on this very last one. So I'll show you this little step right here. I just line it up right up against the edge of the tape. That way I know they're gonna be equal as far as you know going across and then the spacing, we have our little marks right there. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drill this out. Okay. This will take just a second.
pretty thick plastic, so you got to work your way through it. And this is a really small drill bit, so you can't force it or press really hard. Okay, now we're going to go for the last one here. Just eyeballing it real close to make sure I get it right on my mark, just like that. Now there are a couple of different ways I was thinking about doing this, you guys, with these uh, phasers. Um, to replicate that dome effect, there, there are two ways here. Um, if I was just going to be doing the phaser, you know, the look of it only, just to get those little domes back on there, I was thinking about using my um, my solar res, which, which would have worked really, really good. I, I actually did a little bit of testing with that. Now you can see we just pulled our tape away and we got our perfect little holes drilled here. Now I'm just going to, I'm taking my pin vise and I'm just clearing these out a little bit and I'll show you why in just a second. We're using some fiber optic here, you guys. And the size of the fiber optic is just slightly bigger than these holes. I don't have the exact right drill bit for, for those, so, but this works just kind of hogging them out a little bit. Doesn't take very much at all. Okay, we're just kind of going in there and cleaning these back up. should be enough. Hopefully that'll open them up far enough for us. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in my fiber optic. Now this is, um, this fiber optic on, on size I'm using guys is the, um, the 1.0 millimeter fiber optic just going to cut a little piece of it off like that and uh, this is going to work really good for our actual phaser lighting because we're going to get some nice bright lighting with that but uh, we have this little trick we can do with our fiber optic where we can make a little dome on the top of that just by applying some heat here so i'm just using my basic lighter i'm holding it up to the flame here don't put it directly into the flame just get it really close Keep getting closer and you'll start to see the fiber optic, the tip of it start to mushroom over you guys. You don't want to start it on fire, but you got to get it pretty close. We're going to turn it a little bit so we get a nice round even. Just like that, okay? I'm not sure how well you guys can see that, but it made a nice little dome on there and it's just the right scale for our, um, our original phaser bank domes. They're really close to it, okay? So... These first couple here, I'm just cutting it off pretty short. I'm gonna put them right in the holes here that we that we opened up. They're gonna fit kind of tight because, as I mentioned, that drill bit is not quite the right size, so I'm gonna have to open this one up just a little bit more. Just keep working on it until it, our fiber optic slides in there for us. But you can you need to. I don't happen to have one, but you, if you happen to have a one millimeter drill bit, that'd be the drill bit you want to use for this, you guys. So it'll drill that hole out for you the perfect size. I didn't have this much trouble on the top. I think this plastic is a little thicker on the bottom than it is on the top. It's okay, we'll just keep working on it here a little bit. Just open these holes up. this again there we go down it goes you want to push it all the way down there so it's flush okay we're gonna take and make another another little piece here repeat the process again turn it 
little bit. Okay. This one goes in. All right, now, I'm only gonna do it this way on these two side banks over here, you guys. The one facing forward, you know, that, that I mentioned, we're gonna do something a little bit different there. So let's go ahead and get this one for the other side ready. I'm just looking at it up close, guys, just watching it mushroom right over on me when I heat it there. Okay, these holes are gonna have to be opened up as well. Just a touch. Now, uh, if you're gonna use this method, you guys, make sure that um, when you're doing all your wiring on the inside and everything, you know, all the stuff that we've already done, that you make sure you don't have any wires over top of these areas where you're gonna drill these holes and where you're gonna, you know, do this. So I, I had double checked that and made sure. So I don't have to worry there, but just something, you know, kind of heads up for you if you're gonna use this method. good that's going to work for the front and now we're going to see if we drop it into the side over here oh, still a little bit too tight but we're almost there you guys it's easy to lose this fiber optic when you set it down too okay there we go it's going in, push it down all the way flush. All right, we're gonna make another one here. And again, you can see I'm just doing these really short, you guys. They don't need to be long at all. We're not we're not lighting these or anything, so we're, we're gonna cut these off short, flush to the inside of the hole once we flip this over, or to the inside of the saucer. Get this one the same way. in they go okay so kind of hold this up to you and you can see we've got this nice these nice little domes right here now um, when we get ready to you know after we do all of our Aztec painting and everything there are masks in our masking set to come back and paint these little rectangles on here with the little red border around them kind of a kind of a weird kind of mustard sand color that they are with a little red border around them so we'll paint right over the top of these uh, fiber op optic tips but this one here in the front that we're actually going to light, we're going to do this differently, you guys. We're going to meet. We're going to make this um, this longer. Okay, so I'm going to go with a, a length that's probably like maybe a little over two inches long on each side. All right, we're going to mushroom these over again, the same like we did before. This one through. This um, thick, thicker fiber optic is kind of stiff, guys, and it won't make a it won't make a really sharp bend. So that's why I'm making these a little longer. We're going to have to extend this away a little bit because we're going to put an LED. We're going to put a red LED uh, on the end of these to do our lighting effect for our phaser here at the front. that's the plan anyway Let's see if this one will drop through now and it does okay oh, one last one to go here good and in it goes 
just like that. All right. Now I can flip this over. Now I'm keeping my fingers on those. Okay, to make sure that they're um, they're all the way flush. Now I'm going to be using Solar Res to glue these, you guys. Now you don't want to use CA glue um, because it will attack the fiber optic and ruin it, make it become really brittle, and it'll crack and it'll lose all of its you know light light transmitting capacity and all that. So CA glue is a no-no. Model glue is not really a good idea either because it kind of melts it as well. Uh, the only other kind of glue I know of that'll hold it is um, like uh, canopy glue, but I like to use this solar res because it won't attack it at all. And as you can see, I can dry it instantly right here. If I use canopy glue or whatever, I'm gonna be waiting an hour for this to, uh, to cure. So this is pretty much instant, all right? Now you can see what we're gonna have to do here, you guys. You can see we've got our, our little group of windows right here. So we're gonna take this fiber optic, we're gonna gently bend it over and we're gonna mount an LED right here, a red one, just about that far away. You don't wanna to get too far away from your fiber optics, guys, because it, you know the farther away, um, the less light it, or bright it's gonna be at the very tip of the fiber optic. Um, so I'm gonna to try to keep this pretty close because we want those we want those phasers to be pretty darn bright when they fire, okay? So I'm gonna clip these off so they're so they're equal. Okay. Now we're gonna deal with this LED getting this put on in just a second. Get this little piece of fiber optic out of here. We're gonna go ahead and glue these other ones. Just doing the same thing, put my my finger underneath them and pushing them to make sure that they're completely flush a little bit more solar is okay. it looks like we had one fall out on us over on the other side that's no surprise hopefully it didn't fall on the floor and we can find it That's good. Now we can clip these off here on this one, flush, basically, like that. Okay. Okay, good. Our fiber optic didn't go too far on us here. Let's go ahead and put this one back in. Just like that. Make sure it's flush. Glue this one in place. off okay so we're good there now what I'm going to do you guys while I'm thinking about it using this uh, I started using this liquid electrical tape I really like this stuff for my light blocking it's uh, I can go back and cover up all my little connections if I want to after I'm done here um, but when I want to block some light this works really really good for this usually just takes one application and it's a done deal. The reason I'm doing that, you guys, is I don't want those little phaser bank emitters uh, to be picking up any light from inside the hull and have them all, you know, have them on all the time, like when you're looking at the model. Those are just going to get painted over. Um, okay, but this front one, we are not going to paint over on the outside, okay? Okay. Um, that one, we're just gonna leave the two little domes clear. Um, no one will notice it, you guys. Trust me, that's so small on the model. That way, um, when it fires, it's gonna be nice and bright, and we'll get a nice phaser effect. Okay, I'm grabbing a, um, 
five millimeter red LED. Okay. We're gonna use a resistor for testing purposes, but our board calls for no resistors. So don't put a resistor on there, you guys. We do. Um, that's another thing to pay attention to on your instructions. If you do put a resistor on there, it could make your, um, depending on what the value of it is, it could make your lighting dimmer than you really want it to be, okay? The board's set up um, to put the uh, optimal amount of power to the, the LED to where it'll light up nice and bright. So I'm just, but in this case, just to test it, Okay, we got a nice bright red LED. I just want to make sure we had a red LED. Like I said, I never trust these. You hate to get it glued into the model and find out it's the wrong one. Okay, so we don't need the resistor on there anymore. We're going to go ahead and uh, kind of work our way over here to where our fiber optics are going to be. And we're just going to kind of something like this make sure that that's all gonna be good all right now for the LED itself no issues to worry about there we can glue this down with a um, make sure I'm right in the right spot there we can glue this down with our CA glue and it won't bother it but we can't use CA glue on the uh, on the fiber optics don't want to screw those up. Okay, so we're just gluing that in place. All right. Now we're just going to bend our fiber optics down here, you guys. Get them right aimed at the front of our LED. Make sure they're both pointed right at it. Okay, to get this in the middle of the bulb, you guys, I think we're going to need a little piece of sprue to glue these onto, believe it or not. So I'm going to find some. fine you guys so we'll go ahead and glue this in with some CA okay I don't have to worry about any of this window stuff here you guys because we're coming back in and filling all those in from the outside after the model's done so we don't have to worry about getting too close to where the glass might go if we were putting in the kit glass or anything like that all right now we're gonna come back here and lay these down to where they're just pointing at the front of that led like we want them to okay i think i'm gonna cut them back just a little bit. They're actually a little bit too close. All right. You want to do this just right, you guys. We get a really nice bright light coming off of that. I'm happy with that. Now we're going to use our solar res to glue these down. We don't want to get any on the um, on the tips of the fiber optics, you guys. Make sure you leave those clear. Just gonna back 
this up with a little bit more solar rays here. Okay, you guys. Well, that's in place. All right. So, one thing we want to do now, you guys, is um, we're going to get our wiring hooked up here. But uh, what will happen to this, you guys, is that if you don't light block this um, this uh, fiber optic, even the outside of it, not just the you know the tip of it. Um, you're going to get a light leak in there. So like when our lighting is on inside our model, if you don't do that, you're going to see these uh, these two little emitters here on the outside. Let me let me just kind of show you what I'm talking about. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this in the camera. You see how they're um, they're going to pick up light like that? You don't want that to happen. So like when these phases are off, we don't want to see any light coming out of them at all. The only time we want to see them is when they light up in red. All right. So we got to light block that. Okay. So. I'm gonna connect some wires here first. Going back to our uh, our instructions for our control board here, let's go here. And we can see that for the phaser, we're um, controlling the, uh, the plus side and the negative side is going just to the main power connector here, which is our, our power hub basically, okay? So we're connecting the negative side to negative All right, we got the negative side, so we can go ahead and put a blue wire on that. We can just come over here and tap in right there to that negative part of our power circuit, you guys. Real simple. I think people uh, get put off by a lot of this wiring because they tend to overthink it, you guys. And you just have to think basic plus and minus um, and just make sure your polarity is correct and you'll you know, 99% of the time, it's going to work for you. As I said, pay pay extra attention to those um, uh, instructions. Okay. And now we had that phaser wire, right, you guys, that I showed you that came off of the board that we had extra um, coming off of our board that was labeled. That's going to connect right here, guys, to the positive side of this LED. So now we can just come over here and I'll lift this wire up a little bit, cut this off. And we're gonna go ahead and connect right here. down while we're at it okay all right so all we have to do is connect our phaser wire there coming off of our board when we get ready to close the saucer up so now I'm just going to take some um, black electrical tape Just going to cover up the back part of this thing where the uh, where the LED is, you guys. These forward parts here, I'm just going to go ahead and paint because we don't want to cover up our um, kind of do something like this. 
want to I don't want to push that down too far you guys and get it in between the um, the bulb and the uh, the tip of our fiber optics there you guys so it's coming back here far enough to get that sealed push our wires down and then bend it back up so it's flat like that well, that's not quite what I had in mind there. Let me try this once more. Let me get back a little bit further. Okay, more like that. Just leaving it barely enough my uh, LED lead there to so I can solder onto that. Seal this all up real good. there that doesn't want to lay down flat so we're going to have to make a little slice in it right there. Okay. Just getting it all nice and packed down on there. just going to take a little CA glue and just kind of back up this tape here, you guys. That's all I'm doing. So it can never peel or come loose or anything like that, and it'll be on there forever. Okay. Give that a second to cure. Then we're going to take some of our liquid tape here, you guys. We're just going to paint it's going to paint all this uh, all around here. Gonna paint our fiber optic strips, our, our little fiber optics there, paint the back side of these little where we solarized it. Paint over the top of this. Put some right over the electrical tape too. This stuff dries pretty quick too, you guys. Probably about 70 degrees or whatever. It'll, it'll dry in uh, 10 or 15 minutes. I'm putting it on really thick. That way I don't have to worry about it. don't want any of that red light leaking out you guys um, and getting into our um, our windows okay all we want is those two little pinpoints of light on the outside when the phaser fires We are good, okay? Now when I hook up my wire, I'll, um, when we're getting ready, just before we close the saucer up, we're gonna test everything. So what we've gotta do is, we're gonna bring the other saucer part in, at the lower, or the upper saucer this way, and we're gonna have this one kinda like this. Okay, so we can make our wire connections. We gotta jump from one to the other, to bring power from the top to the bottom, like I talked about. Then we gotta connect up these these um, these uh, navigation lights onto our circuit board. Okay, We're using that just that one wire, we gotta tie all these grounds together. Okay, and then when we uh, connect our phaser wire, he'll uh, actually activate it with the, uh, the control board and we'll check it out and make sure it's uh, gonna look good and we don't have any light leaks and all that. And then we're gonna be ready to glue it all together, you guys, that'll be a huge step. All our wires have been extended, okay? 
what I want to show you here on the top side is um, I've been working on these little lights right here for the planetary sensor and um, I want to talk about what I used. I used some 1.8 millimeter um, lighthouse LEDs for the three, the two on the sides and the one that faces the neck. The one that faces forward, we wanted a similar kind of a floodlight effect like we have on the top part of the saucer. So I used a three millimeter lighthouse LED there. Again, I just clipped the little extending tips off of those, glued them down on here flat, used the proper resistors. That's a, it's got a 470 ohm quarter watt resistor on each one of those. You can see where I worked all those in right here. Okay, and then those are just tied into their main power loop again. So they always come on whenever the power comes on on the model. Okay, now as far as the planetary sensor, I'm gonna to talk to you about that a little bit here real quick. Let me get all my stuff out of the way here. I like to work nice and neat whenever possible. Okay. Kind of go back to where we started here. All right, so we've got our little planetary sensor here, you guys. Now, I mentioned in the top that uh, at the top of this that I've got some aftermarket parts. So here is the uh, aftermarket planetary sensor assembly from HDA Model Works. This is a really nice piece. You can see uh, the difference between it and the kit part is that uh, mainly the main difference between the two of them, you guys, is that it's just uh, it's a little bit lower profile if you can kind of see it from the side edge there. And so I was kind of going back and forth on about you know how I wanted to approach this. And um, even though this is a really nice part, and I may use this at some point in the future on another build, because as I mentioned, not too long after I get done finishing this one, I'm gonna be starting another refit. But um, I decided to go ahead and use the kit part just because it's a little easier to work with for me and it's gonna work out for the way I planned out my lighting. Now, the, the thing I do like about the kit part is that you have these separate clear lenses that go in there, where this part here, this is molded in a, uh, a clear resin. So what you have to do is you, you have two options as they explain in the instructions here. You can either, um, you don't wanna use anything to try to cut those out because you'll crack the resin. But if you're gonna open, if you're gonna open those up and have light come out of it that way, you wanna use a file to do that. But what I did is I just made some little bitty masks. I actually started kind of working on this a little bit. I put some little bitty rectangular masks on these, uh, these lenses here so that when I paint this, I can pull those at the end and the light will be able to go through that. I, you know, did all my um, light blocking and all that on the inside here. But the other part that I, like I said, that I mentioned that I like this part a little bit better is that um, these lenses aren't separate. So I would have to go in here and do all my, you know, painting on that and everything. And then also when you lay it down on here flat, it doesn't fit quite as flat on there as the, uh, the kit supply part does. And they mentioned that here in the instructions, you're gonna have to put a little bit of putty around that. And, and we're gonna have to put a little bit of putty around this part too, but uh, not quite as much. So it's just kind of personal preference, nothing at all wrong with this part, you guys. Um, it's a really nice part. And like I said, you can just kind of decide what kind of lighting you're gonna use and, and different factors kind of make your decision for you. So I wanted to use a little bit brighter lighting than regular tiny SMDs that I normally put in this. And um, the thicker lighting won't fit underneath of this lower profile assembly. So I was able to go ahead, go ahead and um, you can see these are actually a different color. They're the same color as the, uh, uh, it's that sort of dark gray that's on the photon emitter at the front of the neck. So I masked these off, put little masks on them, painted them. You gotta put several coats on there to light block them because you're putting some really bright light in there. And uh, I just did it all from the outside and everything with my little masks in place. Pulled my masks and now this is all ready to go. It sits down on here like this. Now I cut the um, the locating pins off. It normally has four little locating pins because that's exactly where my um, LEDs needed to go. And I used that the little holes there to place the LEDs to make sure that they're all going to be perfectly lined up with the center part of my lenses and everything here. Okay. So when I get ready to glue this down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the power and I'm going to kind of eyeball it and make sure all my little emitters are lined up in the middle of my lenses. Then I'm gonna kind of hold it down. I'm gonna put some tape on here, right? Right on these edges to make sure. And those will be my alignment marks. Cause now like we did on the bridge, we did that little trick where we um, 
we put our, our putty on the you know on this flat part, stuck it down, and then we were able to through one of the the two open ports in the front there, we were able to drizzle some CA glue in there. But well, we can't do that on this one because this thing is totally sealed. And I'm going to be using regular model glue to glue this thing down since these are both plastic parts. And so I want to make sure that I don't you know make a big mess here and move this all over the place trying to find it you know get it centered. So that's why I'm going to have the tape and everything. But we'll cross that bridge in, in a little bit here, you guys. Not not have to worry about it just yet, but that's kind of my plan. I've also got a bunch of um, um, Aztec painting to do on this. There's a whole bunch of little patterns that go on this, and we're going to be working with our masking set on that to, to do that before I... It'll be easier to do that before we glue it down onto the model. We've also got some patterns here that go on this little area that partially either butt up right against this or go up slightly underneath of it. So we want to do that first before we glue that down. Okay, a couple of reasons that I'm kind of thinking ahead there. All right, so that's that. All right, you guys, well, what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to let this thing, my little area here, dry a little bit. I'll take a little break and I'll come back and we're going to be ready to put these two saucer halves together, guys. Huge step. We've got to double check everything and make sure everything's good because once we close this up, the wiring better be right or we're going to be in big trouble. But I'm pretty feeling pretty confident here, you guys, like I said, because we methodically worked our way all the way through this, um, double checked everything along the way, like I said, and uh, built, it, built it up layer upon layer with foundations and we should be good to go, you guys. So I'll be right back and we'll get this saucer glued together. Back with you again, everybody. And uh, everything's been drying here for a little bit. You can see we're ready for the big step, you guys. We're gonna be connecting our top saucer to our bottom saucer and gluing it in place. So what I've done here is I've um, pulled all my main wiring harness down through the hole in the uh, lower saucer inside the neck, as you can see there. We've got these two little wires right here, which are gonna jump power from the top of the saucer to the bottom of the saucer right here. Okay, so we're gonna be um, connecting these up real quick. That's the very first thing we're gonna do. All right, get those stripped and I've got some of my uh, shrink tube here. Gotta put that on first. this wire slide it back a little bit you can see I've just got my upper saucer propped up like that that way we can make a, a nice short little run here with our wires going to kind of get these off to the side here a little bit just go ahead and connect that on right here You guys remember this is way back at the beginning where we very first started you guys where we um, put this little power loop around here that's exactly what I'm connecting to right now all right just basic plus and minus wire goes all the way around our little perimeter there Out of both of those connections. Okay. Then we've got our phaser wire. Remember that, guys? I talked about we extended off of our control board. We're coming right over here to this uh, tip we left on our LED, just barely sticking up there. Just gonna try to make this wire as short as possible here. Don't need our phaser label anymore. We know what that is. Okay. Gonna need my little tweezers here for this.
Okay, solder this guy in place. All right, now before I um, glue everything down, you guys, we're gonna, um, we're gonna do some testing on this now. Make sure everything fires up and works properly. Get these uh, two pieces of heat shrink taken care of here real quick. that guy now while we're thinking about it so he's not going to touch anything. Okay you guys we're looking really good here. Let's go ahead and push this one down. Make sure it's nice and flush. Okay, you guys, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my saucer just temporarily laid down on top of this, get this uh, positioned correctly so we can do a little bit of testing on our wires, and I'll be right back with you. Back once more, everybody. Well, take one last look at the open saucer because we're getting ready to close it up now, you guys. I uh, just had a couple little things left to do after we got our little phaser light put in. Um, I had to connect one wire from the control board uh, for our navigation lights to go from the top to the bottom. So we had these three, the red, the green, and the white on the bottom working. So it just took the one wire to cross over there, little jumper wire, that's been done. Uh, we also hooked up the phaser power wire, that's been done. So all the wiring is now complete. All of my harness has been fed through the hole in the bottom of the saucer. Everything has been glued down. I did uh, one final test on all of my uh, lighting all of my uh, control circuits to make sure all of my outputs are working and everything is working perfectly you guys so we're, we're gonna take the next really big step here and that's getting ready to close the saucer up now um, when I was doing my test fitting on this um, this model has an issue with the pin locators on it it seems like all throughout the kit uh, we know that the pin locators are wrong you know as far as where the shuttle bay floor goes they're not off by much maybe like about a millimeter or so but just a little bit what I found when I was putting my saucer together here using the pins, um, not only did I have trouble getting, to, getting them to bottom out all the way, even though I kept them clean, um, when I did, I would have like a little lip sticking out on one side of the saucer and a little bit reverse lip on the other side. In other words, the saucer top to bottom is not centered and that's where it's lined up on the pins. So um, I decided to cut all the pins away, you guys. And um, now when you cut these pins off, I didn't cut it down all the way flush to the bottom of the, of the, you know, the inner saucer wall here. I just cut off the extension pin because these little bulkheads here will still actually touch on these when we uh, glue this together. So they'll still have support there. But we have the ability to now move it and shift it around just a tiny little bit. And uh, that's gonna make a lot better. Um, we may not be able to get it absolutely perfect all the way around, but we can have a lot better shot at at you know getting the even sides for the most part which is I just gotta say it was way off before that so um, we're ready to seal this up you guys so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna use tape one thing I want to mention you guys is um some people out there have made the mistake of using these clamps uh, once you you know glue the saucer together that, to uh, clamp it all together well they found out the hard way that um, this will gouge your paint, guys. It's just too much. You can't put this over top of an area that's already been painted. Okay, so if you've already done your, your primary paintwork like we've done here, if this was bare plastic on the outside, no problem. But with paint on it, even if you put masking tape, this stuff, uh, especially if it's gonna sit on there uh, for several hours while this dries, it will make mar, it will mar your paint, basically. It's gonna make little indentations in it and you'll be very upset afterwards, so. I recommend just using some regular masking tape, you guys. This is my technique here. It works really good. We'll show you how we do it. Right now, we're going to sit down and we're going to um, put a bead of all, our Model Master glue all the way around the bottom and all the way around the top. And then we're going to touch on these little 
extension points here and then we're gonna flip it over and glue it in place, okay? Now I've scraped all the paint and primer off this entire edge here, anywhere where it's gonna make contact, it's uh, the top and the bottom, it's perfectly clean, okay? So I'm gonna work, since it's easier to, to keep a nice bead, this little line on the, on the bottom one's a little thicker than the top, so I'm gonna work on the bottom. Now, where I've got these little um, uh, thruster ports here with these two little rectangles that that light has to come, I'm gonna stay back just a little bit away from that with my glue. I do not want my glue to get inside uh, those little rectangle openings and get all gummed up where it'll take a lot of work to get that cleaned out of there. I wanna keep that fairly clean. We're gonna probably put some liquid CA in there in that little spot later on or whatever we need to do, but it's not gonna weaken the whole structure that much at all. So I'm just gonna stay away from those as I put my bead of glue down. Get some glue flowing here. Just gonna put a nice healthy bead all the way around you guys. These big ships, it takes a second or two. I might be a little bit off camera for you guys here too. I apologize for that. This takes up a lot of space. We'll get you back in there when we go ahead and make the big move and close it up. Takes just a little bit of time here. We're making sure we got a nice, even bead all the way around. And again, I mentioned I'm staying away from these uh, thruster ports just a little bit. Let's go around here to the uh, back half of the saucer around our impulse deck. kind of skip over that little thruster port there again. And we can't wait too long here, guys. Once we get the speed laid down, we got to set it down on here pretty quick. Okay. Now I'm just going to put a real thin one on this edge. thruster ports. I don't have to be perfect on this one here, you guys. We've got most of our glue on the, uh, on the bottom side here. If I'm not careful, I'm going to glue it to my elbow. This will make a really nice strong bond with this bare plastic like this. And uh, we're gonna let it cure for a good 24 hours before we do anything with it. Okay, we're ready to make the flip, you guys. So I've got my just regular masking tape here. And uh, we're gonna set it down permanently, you guys. Just guiding my wiring here, making sure my wiring comes up through nice and clean. We're going to tuck our little slack wiring off in the center here so it's not interfering with anything. And we are ready to drop. Now, I, all I have to do here to line up the back is, is make sure I'm uh, dead center on the uh, middle of the impulse deck. Okay. Just like that make sure it wipe off my hands really quick you guys make sure I don't have any glue on my fingers or anything don't want to turn this into a glue bomb okay we're gonna start off right there we're just gonna push the edges of the saucer up so it becomes nice and flush we're trying to feel that with our fingers
got something in here that's um, really pushing up hard here, and I don't know what it is. I've got to clear that out of it, whatever that is. I didn't have that issue a minute ago. Yeah, it's one of my... Um, this is one of my zip ties got in the way. It. Okay, get this perfectly centered. Same thing up front. I can just barely still see the seam where we put the uh, side walls on, and it's right dead center on the bow light. So I'm lining up this little, let me get this back in camera. I'm lining this little bow light up here right with it. I didn't bother um, getting all these uh, side edges perfected yet, you guys. There's no point in doing that until you get the until you get the saucer glued together. Okay, we're centered perfect there. All right, I'm gonna start putting down some tape. So what you do with this tape, you guys, is just put it on there, you know, press it down on here. This is a nice clean surface, so this will stick really good. And just keep tension on it all the way as you roll it on onto the other one. And it, it's, it's just as good or better than a clamp. It won't give at all. This is really good tape. Okay. Just double check it one more time here to make sure. We're pretty well flush all the way around. And we're going to go ahead and do one here at the very front now. Kind of opposite of what we just did. Pull that real tight. Roll it over. Okay. Now we can just start working our way around, you guys. We'll start right here. This we got to do kind of fast because we're we're looking at our glue drying up on us here. This immediately starts making the model stronger right away too, you guys. The whole saucer gets a lot stronger as soon as you connect the, the bottom to the top. real tight almost to the point where you're ripping it and it'll, it'll stay that way nice and tight sure it's a little bit longer so they grip real good basically doing is squeezing it together while I'm with my fingers while I'm doing that to make sure that we're pulling that these two halves together completely tight just like that I'm trying to go like every inch or so with my tape inch and a half something like that set. Everything looks lined up really good, you guys. Perfectly straight. We're looking good. Well, maybe we've got a couple more. Yeah, let's do it right in here. Okay, you guys. 
we're all set there. Now, I'm gonna have to take a little break because this has gotta dry for a while. So what my plan is, guys, is um, after I let this dry overnight, I'll come back and uh, we'll pull all of our tape off of here and we'll show you some of the uh, lighting and everything on the saucer now that it's all sealed up. And then we're gonna start doing our um, seam work around the edge there and get that all cleaned up. Won't be won't be much to do. It's it's looking pretty good, you guys. We're gonna we're gonna have to do a very minimal amount of sanding. We're gonna use a lot of our um, perfect plastic putty so we don't have to do a lot of uh, blending or anything like that. And uh, should work out pretty good. Okay, just a second for you. About 24 hours for me, guys. Be right back. Okay, well it's been about 24 hours or so since our saucer was drying here. I just finished off um, pulling all the tape off of it. And I'm really happy with what we got, guys. We don't have any major gaps at all anywhere on the uh, saucer. You can see we've got a couple little light leaks here on the edge, but that's because uh, the light's actually leaking through the plastic itself. And that's where I sanded it down to make sure that we were gonna have um, a really good glue point between our top and bottom saucer. So I had to sand off all the paint, all the primer and everything there. But we got a really nice solid bond. I checked it all. Nothing feels loose or like, you know, we got a really nice tight seal there that'll last forever use some good quality glue and we're all set so um, I was gonna show more work on the saucer edge getting it cleaned up in this video but this video is getting kind of long we'll cover that in the next video that's the beginning of the next video and then we're gonna be moving on to the uh, the neck the pylons and the secondary hull I'm sure you guys sure you guys are probably getting tired of looking at this saucer but we're just taking our sweet time here you guys just being really meticulous and double checking everything and it's all paying off in the end we did all that double checking and everything with our wiring after I just after I glued this together, I went back and turned everything on, checked everything to make sure it was all good, but all that extra time and effort we put into our wiring there paid off and we didn't have any issues. Everything's working great. You can see we got our green nav light over here. We got our red on this side. We got our bow light going up at the front. I've got the planetary sensor glued in place permanently now. Um, I had to do that a little different than I did the bridge because it's completely sealed. There's no way to leak glue to the inside of it. so. What I did is I sat it down on here and I kind of moved it around because uh, remember I, I removed the locating pins because that's where I wanted to put my LEDs. Um, but I sat it down on here and what I did is I looked at it to make sure the, the lenses here were all lined up perfectly with my uh, with my LEDs inside there that they were all centered in each, each corner and that it was centered on the middle of the saucer. And I'm really happy with that. And um, what I did then is I took and put some tape down uh, you know on these straight edges right here to make a kind of a guide spot because I had to use regular model glue to hold this down and um, I didn't want to slide it all over and make a mess so that worked out great I just put it down on there first shot and it lined up really nice and so it's all sealed down on there real good um, all of our window lighting is coming through in the middle of the saucer from those LEDs that we put on that piece of cardboard that are facing straight down we got a nice lighting effect at the top too on the BC deck I've got our uh, impulse engine on right here temporarily, just you know checking everything. But everything came out really good, you guys. I'm real happy with this. Um, so we're going to be able to um, finish this up. Now what we're going to do in the next step is we're going to back tape away from the uh, edges here. We're going to put our perfect plastic putty around the seams there, clean up any imperfections, get it sanded smooth. And then we're going to use an airbrush to blend all of our paint in around just the edge here and get it all worked in so it's nice and clean. And then once that's done, you guys, this thing's ready for... Um, the Aztec painting, which I'm really excited to get starting on. We're using the new set from uh, Mask Design, and um, I've never used them before, but I expect it to be very similar to the masking sets I've used in the past, so we'll be getting started on that with all of our beautiful iridescent colors and everything, and it's going to be a lot of fun to start getting into that. And then after we finish that, we'll come back and paint on all the rest of the color detail, like the little hatch covers here, the color that goes around the neck, and uh, there's some detail to do on the planetary sensor and all that. We'll just kind of work our way along. You can see we um, uh, used that one millimeter fiber optic here to replace all of our phaser banks. That worked out really good. They're nice and in scale the way they should be. It's really easy to do that. I went ahead and painted over all of them except the ones here in the very front on the bottom, which are actual phaser emitters that actually light up. So let me go ahead and show you how this looks. Get my camera over here. And um, yeah, we got a nice bright red effect going on there. Let me hit it for you one more time. Now this will have a sound effect with that too from the, I'm gonna, I picked up the phaser sound effects from uh, Star Trek The Wrath of Kanyo, that kind of crackling sound that they made, really unique to the refit. 
and um, I'll be showing you a little bit later on how I set up my soundboard and everything and get that to work how I edit those sound files and everything because we're gonna have that the photon firing effect possibly the warp engines when it goes to warp a couple different things maybe some music and I'll show you how I edit that and get it all synced up with these actual lighting effects it's not that hard to do you guys so I always have a lot of fun working on that stuff too but everything's working really good you guys I'm real happy um, as I said we'll be coming back in the next video getting the seam tidied up we'll move on to the pylons the neck the secondary hull so we'll have a nice change of scenery thanks for being patient you know we're just taking our time here like I mentioned kind of being meticulous and just making sure everything is right but uh, it's all working out really really good you guys uh, I'll be back with an update on this in the next couple of days so uh, thanks for following along and uh, one thing I want to say before I close out it's really inspiring to see the uh, comments coming in about people that are uh, using these videos and it's it's inspiring them to start their own build because you know this model can be a little bit intimidating but hopefully these videos uh, make it a little bit easier and you get you guys get a little bit more confidence in that that haven't built this before and that's why I do it you guys so uh, hopefully it's helping you out out there all right we'll see you next time everybody and until we do take care and happy modeling